Not much is known about the life of Saint Clement. There is a suggestion that he is the same Clement mentioned in Saint Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, verse 3. Clement may have been ordained by Saint Peter himself. Saint Clement is listed as the fourth Pope, Bishop of Rome, from around AD 91 to 97. Tradition says that he was martyred by being thrown into the sea, tied to an anchor. His only extant work is his letter to the Corinthians. Why would the church in Corinth write to the Church of Rome unless they felt that Rome had some form of universal authority? In his letter, Clement puts forward the argument for apostolic succession. The letter is thought to have been written around AD 96. The second epistle of Clement and the rest of the Clementine literature are later works attributed to him, but scholarly opinion attributes the writing to someone other than Clement. Our apostles also knew through our Lord Jesus Christ that there would be strife on account of the office of the episcopate. For this reason, therefore, inasmuch as they had obtained a perfect foreknowledge of this, they appointed those already mentioned, and afterwards gave instructions that when these should fall asleep, other approved men should succeed them in their ministry. We are of opinion, therefore, that those appointed by them or afterwards by other eminent men with the consent of the whole church and who have blamelessly served the flock of Christ in a humble, peaceable, and disinterested spirit, and have for a long time possessed the good opinion of all, cannot be justly dismissed from the ministry. Chapter 44 Clement is reiterating the doctrine of apostolic succession set down in Acts 1, 15-25. Therefore, as the successor to Saint Peter, Clement can write this letter to the Corinthians because he has the same universal authority through apostolic succession that our Lord gave to Saint Peter. The Church of God which sojourns at Rome to the Church of God sojourning at Corinth, to those who are called and sanctified by the will of God through our Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from Almighty God through Jesus Christ be multiplied. Owing, dear brethren, to the sudden and successive calamitous events which have happened to ourselves, we feel that we have been somewhat tardy in turning our attention to the points respecting which you consulted us and especially to that shameful and detestable sedition utterly abhorrent to the elect of God in which a few rash and self-confident persons have kindled to such a pitch of frenzy that your venerable and illustrious name, worthy to be universally loved, has suffered grievous injury. For whoever dwelt even for a short time among you and did not find your faith to be as fruitful of virtue as it was firmly established, who did not admire the sobriety and moderation of your godliness in Christ, Chapter 1 These things, beloved, we write to you, not merely to admonish you of your duty, but also to remind ourselves. For we are struggling in the same arena, and the same conflict is assigned to both of us. So, let us give up vain and fruitless cares, and approach to the glorious and venerable rule of our holy calling. Let us attend to what is good, pleasing, and acceptable in the sight of Him who formed us. Let us look steadfastly to the blood of Christ and see how precious that blood is to God, which having been shed for our salvation has set the grace of repentance before the whole world. Let us turn to every age that has passed and learn that from generation to generation the Lord has granted a place of repentance to all who would be converted to Him. Noah preached repentance and as many as listened to Him were saved. Jonah proclaimed destruction to the mean Evites, but they, repenting of their sins, propitiated God by prayer and obtained salvation although they were aliens to the covenant of God. Chapter 7 Let us consider, beloved, how the Lord continually proves to us that there shall be a future resurrection of which He has rendered the Lord Jesus Christ the firstfruits by raising Him from the dead. Let us contemplate, beloved, the resurrection which is at all times taking place. Day and night declare to us a resurrection. The night sinks to sleep, and the day arises, the day departs, and the night comes on. Let us behold the fruits, how the sowing of grain takes place. The sower goes forth and casts it into the ground, and the seed, being thus scattered, though dry and naked, when it fell upon the earth, is gradually dissolved. Then, out of its dissolution the mighty power of the providence of the Lord raises it up again, and from one seed many arise and bring forth fruit. Chapter 24 The apostles have preached the gospel to us from the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ has done so from God. 
Christ therefore was sent forth by God and the apostles by Christ. Both of these appointments then were made in an orderly way according to the will of God. Having therefore received their orders and being fully assured by the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and established in the word of God with full assurance of the Holy Ghost, they went forth proclaiming that the kingdom of God was at hand. And thus, preaching through countries and cities, they appointed the first fruits, having first proved them by the Spirit to be bishops and deacons of those who should afterwards believe. Nor was this any new thing, since indeed many ages before it was written concerning bishops and deacons. For thus says the scripture in a certain place, I will appoint their bishops in righteousness and their deacons in faith. Chapter 42 Let us then also pray for those who have fallen into any sin, that meekness and humility may be given to them, so that they may submit, not to us, but to the will of God. For in this way they shall secure a fruitful and perfect remembrance from us with sympathy for them both in our prayers to God and our mention of them to the saints. Let us receive correction, beloved, on account of which no one should feel displeased. Those exhortations by which we admonish one another are both good and highly profitable, for they tend to unite us to the will of God. For thus says the Holy Word, The Lord has severely chastened me, yet has not given me over to death. For whom the Lord loves he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. Chapter 56